This is Algebra 1, Unit 10, Lesson 4, the rest of the notes on variation within a data set. Okay, so we left off from the notes yesterday is talking about sample standard deviation. All right, now sample standard deviation is different from population standard deviation, not only because it's a symbol of S instead of, at, uh, instead of the loopy symbol like this, the sample standard deviation is when you are trying to take a sample of a whole population. All right, we were talking, this was an example of talking about uh, preferences for soda. You can't choose everybody in the entire world to do your, to do your population and figure out a standard deviation for it. So what you have to do is pick a sample. So the calculation is a little bit different for it, but for our calculator it does work for us. Okay, so sample standard deviation, in this case we did on the calculator, was 9.1. If you want to do it on Desmos, okay, here's Desmos. I entered, uh, so this is soda A, I put in my list. All right, you can see right there, there's soda A. If I want to do the sample standard deviation, I go over to functions here, and I use the one that says STDEV. So standard deviation of A. And you can see it's going to be 9.1. All right, so because I am taking it a sample from a population to draw a conclusion rather than just looking at a whole group of something. So when you do population standard deviation, you have to know which one that is. That's the loopy one. Sample standard deviation is the S looking one. Okay, population versus sample standard deviation. When we are working with every possible data point of interest, we call this the population and use the population standard deviation, which is the loopy symbol. When we have only a sample of all possible values, we use the sample standard deviation, which is the S. It looks like this on your calculator. The formulas for the two differ very slightly, so the values tend to be slightly different. All right, so which of the following data sets would have a standard deviation population standard deviation closest to zero. Do this without your calculator. Explain how you arrived at your answer. Okay, so what we're looking at when we do standard deviation is how much it varies. How much does this is the spread of the data? When you see standard deviation, think spread. All right, now which one of these would have a spread that is closest to zero? Basically, which one, if it's closest to zero, it's not spread out very much. All right, so let's look at our data points that we have. All right, so um, this one goes negative 5, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 5, 5, 8, 10, 16, 20, 11, 11, 12, 13, 13, 3, 7, 11, 11, 11, 18. Which one of these is the least spread out? Well, it would have to be this one. All of these numbers are very, very close together. There's little variation. So this would have a very small standard pop, uh, standard deviation. This one would be a population because these are all the data that we would be looking at. So if we were um, looking at this one, which one would have the greatest variation? Well, it probably, I'm thinking, probably be this one, uh, be number two, because the numbers are the most spread out. Um, these are farthest apart. It goes from 5 to 20. This one goes from negative 5 to 5. This one goes 3 to 18. So probably this one would have. So this one has very little variation in the numbers, so it would have the smallest standard deviation. Okay, so that's about all I have. So you can do the uh, homework that goes with this now.